What's up, sons? It's Blind Run with Sound Tech once again, and today we're going to take a look at a game called Dreadnought and the best way you can improve your frame rate. The game is from Greybox Studios, and it's essentially World of Tanks in space, or like I like to call it, it's World of Tanks with an extra axis. So let's see how you can improve your frame rate right now. To start things off, the test bench is a 7700K overclocked to 4.8 gigahertz. The rest of the details will be in the description. And the two GPUs we went ahead and took a look at were gonna be the GTX 1066 gigabyte and the RX 484, or eight gigabyte, excuse me. Now, this is important because you need to understand that I need to have a similar situation from both AMD and Nvidia, and then we take the average percent change in FPS from each of these cards and then calculate it out that way to get you the best average or overall idea of what settings are going to help you improve your frame rate. Now the caveat to that would also be if there are any situations in some games where we might run into NVIDIA or AMD specific settings. Fortunately for Dreadnought that's not the case and there weren't any great disparities otherwise I would mention them and let you know about them but that is not the case for Dreadnought. The first setting is going to be shader quality and you're going to see a 19.7% change in FPS so almost a 20% change in FPS and we'll net you the biggest improvement in frame rate that you can obtain for this game. Now to give you an idea of what that does is the shader quality is basically going to be the production of levels of light in a certain scene and I'll try to throw a side by side up here I do apologize I think the compression from the Nvidia I guess shadow play or whatever the hell seem to not quite give a great representation and of course the YouTube compression is going to make that even more difficult to see but hopefully you can see a little bit of a difference there if you can't then that's obviously good for you because that means that you're not going to have to worry about netting yourself an extra 20 percent the next setting which is usually pretty typical is texture quality and the texture quality is just going to be the quality of textures you know uh, across the entire game. The caveat to that for this game in particular is that this game has individual quality of textures in the ships and the environment and etc and you can turn those off or down depending on what you want to do there. The reason I mention that is because if you just turn overall texture quality off it's just going to automatically sh change the texture quality of the ships and the environment and that's kind of why you see that overall huge boost in FPS and that's kind of deceptive I would say. The next setting is anti-aliasing and anti-aliasing is basically going to remove the jaggies that you see created by the pixels. This is less noticeable at higher resolutions however all tests were done at 1080p and as you can see in this side by side it is kind of interesting you will notice the jaggies with AA off and this game actually uses a temporal AA and that temporal AA attempts to smooth the jitters that a normal AA causes. What ends up happening here though is it almost creates some sort of like, I don't know if it's a fog, but you can kind of see that while you have the jaggies on one side, the other side you almost have a, a sort of blur going on. It's not a motion blur, but it's like a foggy blur kind of over the scene, which is give or take depending on like if you want to turn it on or turn it off. However, of course, if you're running at higher resolutions, I just, I just would as well turn it off. And you're only going to see about, you know, a, a little bit of improvement in visual quality at anything above 1080p. And you'll gain 13.5% in FPS in this particular game. So it is worth turning off. The next is post-processing quality with 8.9% change in FPS. And this is going to be items such as anti-aliasing. So once again, this one's kind of weird because I think they lumped a lot of settings into this. Some of the settings they might have lumped into this would be motion blur and depth of field, both settings that most PC gamers don't really enjoy. So you might as well turn it off and net yourself almost a 10% gain in frame rate. 
The next one is environmental texture quality. And that's just like I mentioned before with the texture qualities, that is just going to be specific for the environment. So it won't affect the ships, et cetera, et cetera. So you can turn that off individually and net yourself almost 10% change in FPS. The environmental details is another one, which is almost like a, a mesh or it's essentially what it is, is it's the quality or not the quality, the amount of details behind the layer of textures for the environment. So you're going to have extra lumps, extra bumps, extra features, I would say, to the environment. And you can net yourself an 8.9% gain in FPS with that. The next is ship mesh detail, which is similar to environmental detail and it's just essentially going to be that ship model under the textures that are overlaid over that model so you're going to see extra features on the ship whether it's an extra feature on a gun or an extra feature on a pod etc etc that's kind of what you're looking at with that and if you turn that off or down you will net yourself a six percent change in fps the next is particle lighting, which is 4.3% change in FPS. And the interesting thing about particle lighting is that it does increase the actual amount of pixels affected by the lighting effects. So when you see, it doesn't necessarily turn the effect off, it just reduces the amount of glow essentially it, it appears as a glow but it reduces the amount of glow from like a laser shooting or a laser hitting an object and that's where you most notice it in this setting i like it on because it's kind of like a visual reassurance that you're actually getting hits kind of like getting a hit marker of course the game does have hit markers on it so if you're really starving for fps you can turn it off the next setting is visual effect quality, which is kind of similar to the particle lighting, except if you turned it all the way off in theory, you would get rid of all the lights altogether. There are also other things that affect visual effects like explosions, which particle lighting is affected or affects that as well. So it's similar, except it's just going to be more the amount of overall effects and you can turn these off if you feel the need to and you'll net yourself a 3% change like I said. Finally there's shadow quality and shadow quality is essentially just going to be the quality of the shadows in the environment. This game doesn't allow you to actually turn off shadows and I think a part of that is because it is a tactical based shooter so if you were in a position where you're running like one of the ships that's more of like an assassin or a rogue the common theme is to go ahead and try to hide yourself and of course shadows help with that so it doesn't actually appear to affect the draw even the draw distance of the shadows it just uh, apparently affects the actual quality of the shadows now i couldn't really see a difference personally in it on or or on epic or on low maybe you can see a difference here but personally i couldn't find one there are a few other settings that you can mention here. One is visual re relevancy and visual effect relevancy is the amount of objects affected by effects. So anything, you know, that where you have your visual effect quality that goes in hand with visual relevancy is just going to increase the amount of objects around those effects that are affected by it. Wow. There we go. That was long. The next is ship texture quality, which I didn't notice a difference in, which kind of is telling me that the only way to, and I'm not even positive on this one, but the only way to actually affect the texture quality on the ship itself is to actually turn down the overall texture quality. Because we did note there that we had a environmental texture quality difference of 10% while we had a kind of 16% almost double because that was 8.9 percent to 16.4 percent if we turned all textures down but we have a zero percent change in texture qualities on the ship so either something's broken there or it's just not affected at all to me it just doesn't seem like that setting's actually working or it's just not very relevant and then we also have reflections and those reflections are just going to be putting a mirror effect on objects in relation to the rest of the world so usually what happens is the, most of the reflection effects are going on on the ship, but because most of the ships are pretty mute 
and don't have a lot of that going on to where you can see reflections in the world, it doesn't appear to affect frame rate at all. Finally, we have effects texture quality, which is going to be the texture quality of the uh, visual effects. And then, of course, the, the vi that's related to visual relevancy as well, which doesn't seem to change anything. So right now, it does appear that all of the texture qualities, aside from environmental texture quality, are going to be controlled with your overall texture quality setting, unless you only want to net that 9% gain in FPS. So this is all at 1080p, and the game does run above 90 FPS on both the RX 480 and the GTX 1060 with all settings on. It doesn't seem to affect it that much. Of course, the reason you might want this chart, and, and it's very relevant because this is a competitive game, is if you're running a 120 hertz monitor, you can go ahead and go through here and find settings that you could turn off. One of the biggest ones, obviously, is you could just turn off shader quality and for the most part, get yourself playing around 120 FPS, which means you'll be in good synchronization with your monitor. If you guys like this type of video without all of the benchmarks, please let me know in the description below. It does take a lot of time to do this portion, but like I've said before, I really enjoy doing it. So if you like it, definitely hit that like down below because then I'll make more of them for you to check out. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And like I said, I'll see you next Tuesday.